guys, welcome to today's video. Today is actually a super exciting one because I'm going to show you how I turned this dresser that we found on the side of the road into this beautiful, completely new design inspired by this coasters and this $1,600 dresser from Anthropology. That's right. So if you want to see how I did it, just keep on watching. Let me show you what it looked like when we found it. Come on. At first glance, it doesn't look very impressive. It's tired looking, it's really dark, and it's got quite a bit of damage on the finish. And it looked like the previous owners had put some casters on it to move it, and then they damaged the skirt of it. So we removed all of that, and Corey built this mid-century modern legs to kind of give it that vintage look, but still make it a little bit modern. And then we moved on to sanding the whole thing, including uh, rounding off the edges of those legs because they are really sharp looking. So just to make them a little bit softer. You can also use a stripping chemical to do this, but whenever possible, we try not to use those chemicals because of the fumes and whatnot. So we decided to sand this one instead, starting with a 60 or 80 grit and then moving all the way up to 220 so that you have a really smooth surface. For the finer details or crevices where the overall sander can't get in, it's best to just take off the sanding pad and sand it by hand. Okay, so after we finished sanding, we realized that there were some holes on the back of the dresser. And the reason for that is that there used to be a mirror connected to the stretcher. Well, we don't have the mirror anymore, and so there were those nail holes, or actually they look like dowel holes. That is where the dresser was attached, and so I needed to patch them up, and I thought I would try this glue method, um, which is, you know, to match the exact same color, you mix some glue with some of the sawdust that you get from sanding the piece, that way you know it's the exact same wood. And in theory, it would work perfectly, so let's go try that out. I mixed some of the glue that we regularly use for our furniture with a little bit of the sawdust from the sawdust collector from my orbital sander to create this paste that I could use to patch up my holes. It is a really fine powder because we ended up using 220 grit, so it mixes up really easily and really well. With the same little plastic spatula that I used to mix it, I went ahead and put it on the little holes, pushing it in as much as I can. Sometimes I would grab a toothpick to do that and then scraping off all of the excess and then moved on to this big crack and filled it in with that too. I used a toothpick again to push it in and then scrape off all of the excess so that it will be easier to sand it off when it was dry. So this glue served as a patch and also to glue that crack close together so I clamped it off and let it dry overnight. You guys, this is not looking good. Okay, so the glue didn't work, that's okay. We're going to drill it out and do what I should have done to begin with, which is put a dowel in there and then patch that hole. Sometimes you want to try different things and they don't work out. Hey, you know what? We're all learning here. So let's go ahead and work on those dowels. Uh My dowel is 3 16 but you know, you'd have to measure yours. You want it to fit a little bit snug, but you want to be able to put the glue in and slide it in so that it stays in place. Then let it dry and we'll come back to that. Once it dried, I used my multi-tool to cut off the excess and then I moved on to sanding it. I started with a 180 grit and then moved on to 220 until I had a really smooth surface.
Before moving on to the next step, you want to make sure that you remove all of the excess sawdust if you have any, if you've been sanding your pieces. Uh, so I used a wet rag to do that and then I moved on to mixing my paint. It, this is just plain white paint with some water, really watery. I'm making a wash because I want to give my piece a very aged and old and weather look. There is no wrong way to do it. Mix in some water and make sure you spread it evenly throughout the whole piece of furniture and then let it sit for a couple of minutes. And once you've let it set for a few minutes, go ahead and wipe off all of the excess. You don't want to take it all completely off because you want some of that whitewash to give you that weather look, but you do want to put some pressure on it so it doesn't look like paint. This stencil actually came with this border that you see here on the screen but I didn't use that because I wanted a different spacing so I decided to mark my own and then I, I drew a line with my chalk pencil and then I taped the entire thing according to those measurements and those lines that I had drawn. After taping the entire border, I moved on to cutting any edges that it needed to be trimmed. And for this, I like to use my metal ruler. If you use a plastic one, your exacto knife will go into it and kind of cut into it. So it's best to use the metal one if you have it and then you just lift it off. Make sure you put just the right amount of pressure. You don't want to cut through the wood, but you also need to make sure you cut all of the tape. Here is my first portion of this stencil. It is the border. I went ahead and took the tape off to make sure that it was a crisp line and to let it dry so that I could move on to the next step. And my camera is at a bit of an angle, so this line looks a little bit thinner than the rest, but it is not. It's just the angle. While the top was drying, I flipped this on the side and I marked the centers of the front of the drawers so that I could start from the center. I like to do this with my pattern so that I have an even distribution on either side and my pattern is exactly centered. So I went ahead and stenciled it and what I like to do is that I like to use a, a makeup sponge for stenciling. I have a stenciling brush but I do not like it because I feel like I have more control with the sponge plus it doesn't make that annoying tapping noise that the brush does. Okay, here is the biggest secret that I'm going to tell you. I like to use some glue whenever I'm using a design that has a lot of detail or it has a lot of really skinny lines because it's really hard to keep them in place and I knew I was going to roll on this larger part and whenever you're using a roller that thing is going to move around like crazy so you better be safe and keep it in place with something like this glue. And again, I'm going to start from the center. I've already marked the center of the drawers, both horizontally and vertically, so that I know that I have a perfectly centered design and it's even on all of the sides. Once you do that, go ahead and press your stencil firmly and we're ready for the fun part. So here comes the fun part, which is to actually stencil. And I'm going to tell you something. Stenciling is a pain in the butt. It doesn't matter how simple people try to make it look online. It, I mean, it's not rocket science. It's not hard in the sense that it is a difficult task. It's hard in the sense that it's really detailed and tedious. So it's important that you pay attention, that you don't overload your brush or your roller or your sponge with a lot of paint and have like a lot of juices flowing in there <laughs> because that's just going to create a mess. So. So I've already poured some paint, just regular paint, this time don't water it down and I'm rolling my high density foam roller into this piece. It is key that you use a high density foam roller because if you use one of those regular nappy rollers it's going to get too juicy and you're going to have a soupy mess. Start by gently rolling your roller. <laughs> Start by gently rolling your roller across the piece until you get an idea of how much paint you have on your roller and then you can put some pressure into the whole thing. And just like a brush or a sponge, it's important that you offload some of your paint. So you see me here kind of rolling it around to get an even distribution before I go on to my piece of furniture. Don't forget to keep your sponge handy so that you can touch up any parts where the roller can't reach. And 
then as you can see that edge I'm going to have to remove the top so that I can reach that corner and also I don't know if you can see here on the top ledge of my dresser I couldn't get my stencil in there because it was a little tight so I ended up having to take the top completely off and then putting it back on off I went ahead and stenciled that part that I couldn't reach before and I can sh I don't know if you can see here how there is like a little bit of a height to my stencil I needed to sand that down so I took advantage of not having the top so that I could reach that edge and I sanded all of the sides of this dresser and then I went ahead and put the top back on Since we rolled on the bigger part of the stencil, there is a quite a few parts where the image didn't come out as crisp as I would like. So the next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to touch it up. I am using the back side of my utility knife to scrape it off, not the sharp side, but the other side. I don't want to cut into the piece. I just want to scrape off some of that excess. And the more time you spend doing this, the better your image will look. I'm not going for perfect, but I do want some of those rounded pieces and less defined pieces to look a little better than they do right now. Hopefully you guys can see the difference here. Some of the parts are more defined and that is going to make your design look a lot better. We're almost done guys, I promise. But um, the last step, well actually not the last one, but one of the last steps is to seal our piece. And we're going to wax it this time because I want that soft um, look that you get with wax. It's like a matte soft look. And because this is like an aged kind of whitewash weather look, I think that the wax would look really well with it. So let's do that. This time I'm going to use my Sweet Pickings Beast Wax. I love this one. It smells really good. It's a lemon scent and it's also really durable, no VOCs. Um, but the main reason I wanted to use it is because I am almost out of it. So I wanted to use it up. Um, I'm using my Paint Pixie Wax Brush. This is my favorite way to apply wax. You can also use a rag if you don't have a fancy brush, but it definitely makes it easier when you have a brush. And then just go ahead and follow the instructions for whatever wax you are using or whatever sealer you're using. For wax, you generally want to put this for 20 minutes, um, give or take, and then you wipe it off with a soft cloth and then you reapply as many times as you consider appropriate. On dressers, I like to do two to three coats at least on the top because people tend to put stuff on top. So I want it to be durable and easy to wipe. Um, but so I will do that a couple times and that is it. The last time you want to buff it, put a little bit of pressure on it so that you get some shine and this should cure in about 30 days. It will harden on its own and you'll be able to wipe it gently with a damp cloth. Now we're at the last step and the last step is one of my favorite ones because it's when the whole thing comes together and that step is to put the handles on and I chose to go with these antique brass handles. They are kind of small but I think I like that because they give it a little bit of glam but it's like understated. I asked on Instagram to see kind of what suggestions y'all had and one of my really good friends that is actually super crafty uh, suggested that I should do some raw leather handles but I didn't have the hardware for it and I wasn't and go buy it because you know quarantine and all and also I didn't want to wait for them to come in the mail. And that is it for today guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something today. Um, I wanted to create like a boho natural look but also something that is versatile that goes with a lot of styles. I can picture this with like a lot of plants and a very colorful room but also in a minimalist natural tones neutral room. So I think it turned out great. Also compared to the $1,600 piece that we saw in Anthropology, I think we did pretty well. This one doesn't have any bone inlay which is part of the reason why that one is so expensive. I get it. 
but if you wanted to create that similar look, I hope that this can help you accomplish that and I hope that I taught you something. So, see you next time. Bye! Was that you, living in someone else's dreams?